So at this time, we move to the Center for Connectional Resources. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our newest director of Connectional Resources. Uh, I start to say, I started to ordain you right then and there. So uh, anyway, so Christy Drenner, of course, who's a clergy spouse, but is our director of Connectional Resources. Uh, tomorrow during the C CFA report, we will vote on electing her the treasurer, which she's already serving as, but we have to do that every four years. And so we'll do in that be doing that tomorrow during their report. But she'll be reporting from the Center for Connectional Resources and has some other things to bring to us. So Christy, thank you and welcome to North Texas, at least to the conference staff. You're well aware of North Texas, I know. Thank you. Good afternoon, Bishop and members of the annual conference. It is a joy to be with you this day to share about the Center for Connectional Resources, or as we like to say, the Ministry of Administration. While it might, might not always be the most exciting aspect of ministry, we all know how vital good financial stewardship is to our longevity. I would like to pause for a moment and give a shout out to all the church business administrators that might be joining us today. Being married to United Methodist pastor, I understand your struggle. Sometimes the spirit moves faster than the budget, but I digress. It has been a busy five months since I started on January 1st. I'm extremely grateful for my team and all of the clergy and lay members of the boards that I am lucky enough to work with. It has been a challenging spring, but the commitment of these leaders to continue the good work of the conference has been inspiring. For those who might be new delegates, I would like to share a little bit about what our center does. While the annual apportionment budget the delegates will vote on tomorrow is less than $11 million, our center receives and disperses three times as much each year. In 2020, the unaudited total was closer to 34 million. Most of these additional funds come from managing the comprehensive pension, health, and property insurance programs. In addition to managing the accounting, we partner with other centers to support the work of the local churches. Here are a few recent examples of our collaborations. One of our insurance carriers provides unlimited access to ministry safe training. Reverend Emma Williams with the Center for Leadership Develop and I met with the carrier and are planning to co-lead a back to school webinar to help our churches learn how to take full advantage of not only the ministry safe training tools, but resources related to, bring, to hiring practices and even website language. Lisa Putnam on our team has been hard at work getting certified as a Salesforce certified administrator so that we can create a source of truth for data, for conference data. We have a few databases that are, we are hoping to consolidate into one. She has been working with Reverend Jeremy Bassett, the new disaster relief coordinator in the Center for Missional Outreach on how to build his disaster relief team information inside the platform to maximize efficiency. So when the need arises, they will be equipped to issue the call quickly. In the Center for Church Development, Owen is always busy creating strategies and opportunities to align churches in new and exciting ways. He often says, I, would I was told there would be no math. So he leaves the complex accounting structures he creates to our Center for Management. In addition to my center, uh, in addition, my center supports the work of the following committees. The insurance advisory team, which I'm sure all of you are very familiar with at this point. The board of trustees chaired by Reverend Chris Yost that oversees all of the properties of the annual conference, church closures, and the by bylaws of our conference. The council on finance and administration chaired by Mr. Larry Womack, all accounting and treasury functions. The board of pension and health benefits chaired by Reverend Ann Willett, who's about to give her report. As the name implies, we work closely with Westpath to make sure all of the pension plans, of which there are a few, and the health insurance program are well managed and communicated to the local churches. The standing rules and all statistical information are a part of the, our department as well. In the coming year, I hope to provide regular webinars to review with our local churches some of the policies and best practices related to the important work of the business office. I'm open to any suggestions of topics you might be interested in or learning more about. I would like to emphasize, as I did at the district meetings, that we are here to serve the local church. If you have any questions related to accounting, HR, health or pension benefits, property insurance, and a long list of other items related to business office operations, please do not hesitate to reach out to our team. 
One item of legislation, Bishop, um, to bring before you is that of equitable compensation. On page 18 of the conference workbook, you will find legislative item number three. After all of the statistics are gathered in January, an analysis is done of the average increase in clergy salaries across the conference. It is then reviewed by CFNA and a recommendation is made for DS salaries. Per our standing rules, the percent change of equitable compensation has been tied to the DS salaries. The past two years, we have recommended a suspension in the increase in compensation. Due to the challenging nature of the past year, CFA voted to not increase the DS's salaries. Therefore, the minimum compensation will remain at $50,326 with a housing allowance of $12,000. Bishop, the CCR, CLD, and CFA recommend the adoption of legislation number three. Thank you, Kristen. So, uh, again, this is item, legislative item number three. It is found on page 18 in your workbook, so you should have it handy there. This is before you, and we're going to take a poll vote on that. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So I want you to get ready to vote, and then we're going to provide about 75 seconds for you to vote. Uh, but we're, I'll, I'll tell you when the, the poll will go live here in a moment. I don't think there are any questions, or I know of none. But so we, please get ready to vote. Uh, either yes or no when the poll comes up. So we're ready to go. The poll is up. Please vote yes or no now. Okay, so those voting, there were ninety-eight percent of the people approved the equitable comp for the coming year. There was one abstention and one who voted no. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? And Willett is going to come now. Welcome, Ann. Thank you. I'm Ann Willett. I'm the senior pastor at North Haven Church and also the chair of your board of pensions and health benefits. Again, as Christy said, this may not seem like the most exciting stuff, but uh, once you have some health care needs and once you start thinking about retirements, it's pretty important stuff. So we have had a great year and we are thrilled to welcome Christy Drenner, um, our new di conference director of Connectional Resources, to fill the very big shoes of Reverend Jody Smith. Christy has adapted quickly and led us well in 2021. I call your attention to legislative items four through seven in your conference workbook. Legislative items five and seven are on our consent agenda, so we will vote on them tomorrow. Today, we will be voting on items four and six, and we'll vote at the end of the report on both of those items. So if you have any questions on four and six, you can go ahead and type those into the chat. Item four is our proposed budget for 2022, uh, and it's on page 21 and 22 of the conference workbook. There's an overall increase of 1.83%, or about $28,000. The increases are in a couple of line items. Line 83250, uh, the insurance supplement item increased about $12,500 based on current and anticipated eligibility for clergy on disability. 
and line 83350, retiree insurance increased 10,000 based on actuarial assumptions, a slight increase is needed. We did have some good news. In 2021, the actuals were significantly lower than budgeted because of a three month premium holiday given by Westpath. So that is uh, all I'm gonna say about legislative led item number four. Uh, Bishop, is this the right time to ask questions about this? So let's take them one by one. Okay. Okay, sure, sure. Do we have any questions, Andy? None at the moment. Let's go ahead and vote okay. on this now. Okay. So we're going to be ready to vote. And basically, this is the approval of piece of the budget uh, that has to do with health care for the most part, correct? And, and pension. And pension benefits. So you have it. There are no questions. So I assume you're ready to vote. I'd like for you to get prepared to vote on your devices and in the way we're doing it. We're going to do a poll. We're going to have 75 seconds in order to do that. So please prepare to vote and I will let them know when we're going to put it up. Hold on. You know, I've uh, been corrected uh, or, or learned something new, one or the other or both. And so we're going to do four and six together, like okay. just like I well, said. Whatever you say, Bishop, <laughs> that's what we'll do. <laughs> Did you take that line from Andy Lewis, whatever you said? That's his biggest <laughs> line. I, you need to trademark that, Lewis. Okay, All right, Can, let's talk about number five but we're not gonna vote on it because it's on the consent agenda, but I do wanna explain it. Legislative item number five is the resolution to designate rental housing allowances for retired or disabled clergy. An item that the IRS requires us to approve annually, and this allows covered retired or disabled clergy to use their benefits toward housing expenses, which has some tax advantages. So that is on the consent agenda and will be voted on tomorrow. Item number six is the pre-1982 service rate for 2022. Again, the discipline requires each annual conference to determine the rate for the portion of retirement benefits associated with service before 1982. Last year in 2021, we didn't make any cost of living increases due to the pandemic and economic uncertainty. But this time we are proposing an increase of 2.5% in association with the cost of living adjustment proposed by the Social Security Administration. So if approved, this will amount to $823 for approved service of clergy included. We've reviewed the financial stability of the pre-82 funds and determined there are sufficient funds to cover the increase. So this would be a time to ask any question about legislative item number six. So item number six before you is about the pre-82 pension plan and the amount paid per year of service. And they're recommending the increase of 2.5%. I hope Central Texas does that. Anyway, so uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. Okay, so uh, are there any questions? Do we have any questions? Andy, do you know of any? So there are no questions. Let's prepare to vote. So get your device, wait a minute. Can I go ahead and do number seven? You know, it's- Would that yes, be okay? That's fine with me. Then I'll be done and then we can vote on the two we have to vote on. Whatever you say. Thank you. Wait, that's Andy Lewis's line. I know, <laughs> he's rubbing off on me. Item number seven is approval of our comprehensive benefit funding plan. Some of the decisions that we address on the Board of Pensions depend on actuarial data released by Westpath. And sometimes we don't receive the information needed soon enough 
to make our recommendations for annual conference. So for this reason, we are asking you to allow our conference board of pensions to review, approve, and submit the comprehensive benefit funding plan in the course of our regular meetings. We have several new board members who are highly qualified and interested in doing a deep dive into this plan. And so we are gonna be addressing that in the coming months. Uh, this item is on the consent agenda and will be voted on tomorrow. Thank you. One other item, before, so we're gonna vote here in a moment on four and six, but one of the things I want to share with the annual conference is we have two members from our annual conference who serve on the West Path board and do a very good job. So we're not only uh, are we well represented at the conference level, but we have, um, I would not call it, we have on the ground information that's very helpful to, to our conference board of pensions. And so I think that's important to remember. And as I remember, those two persons are? Nisha Dexter. Nisha Dexter and Steve. Just one? Maybe Nisha's the only one now. I think that was different it's early, a few years earlier. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna vote. So we're voting on item legislative items four and six. I want to remind you um, that, can you remind us what the six is? The six, service year rate. Six is the pre-82 service rate. And four is? The budget. The budget, for pension and health benefits. So you're ready to vote. We know of no questions, get ready to vote. We're gonna open the poll in a moment. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to get ready to vote. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's place the poll up now. You have 75 seconds to vote. Yes or no. So the vote is this, 98% of the people, 98% of the votes were for the approval of both items, 1% abstained and 1% voted no. So those two legislative items passed, the other two will be on the consent agenda. That concludes my report. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. So uh, I want to thank both Ann Willett and Christy Drenner for their work. We appreciate it very much. Christy, you have something else at this time? Okay. So. So, so let's uh, show our word of appreciation to these people who uh, work on the behalf of our clergy. <laughs>